It is always a marathon program every Saturday from 1 to 3 when we're talking about sports happening both local and beyond. Maxwell Wasike is my name. Touchline is the program. It comes your way every Saturday. And, you know, behind the scenes it can get very interesting. You know, when we were just off mic, we were having a conversation and it almost got heated with regards to Achram Hakimi's issue. And, you know, people have got, you know, uh, different versions regarding the same, but you know, it is their right. Anyway, I'm going to speak about, you know, state of futsal in Kenya with James Omondi. You know, James Omondi, I watched him in 2004 during African Cup of Nations that took place in Egypt, and Kenya was participating under Jacob Gostum, and they got eliminated at the group stage. I remember Dennis Oliech scoring during their last group clash against Burkina Faso that ended 3 nil in favor of Kenya. And good to see him back. He's my good friend, Ken. Uh, Jemo, good to see you. How are you doing, man? I'm doing good. Yeah. It's a pleasure coming back to what, what, your what, studio. What has kept you? What is the secret behind your mainstay? You know, 2004, you played for Kenya. You were amongst the strikers for the national team. You guys got eliminated at the group stage. You know, you had to wait for 15 years down the line. We qualified again for Continental Showpiece in 2019 yeah. in Egypt. Mm -hmm. I don't know. How has it been like for you, man? I sleep early. <laughs> uh, and I never, never say... I know you will say, I never drink frothy liquids. No, I, I won't say that. <laughs> <laughs> so no, besides sleeping early, what else do you do that keeps you going? No, I train a lot and um, engage with kids. Uh, yeah. So they keep me a lot all the time. Yeah, you know, because when you engage with kids, they yeah, kids will make your brains work. You know, they will kids ask are, you kids technical are questions. Yeah. You will have to have a reason. Yeah. To respond to their issues. Especially modern kids, they are very inquisitive and they do a lot of research. Uh, with, the, with the internet, they do a lot of research. So you, you want to be very sure with what you are saying. Otherwise, they would correct you immediately if you say the wrong thing. So you need to really engage the kids. You need to do uh, a lot of research uh, so that you engage the kids. Ken, Ken and uh, uh, Tatiana, you know, they were getting shocked when we were talking about 2004. They uh, probably were not... They were toddlers. Maybe, or not yet born. <laughs> it's been, you know, mm -hmm. two decades now. Yeah. Where yeah. do you see Kenyan football heading? If we can just digress a little bit. Um, the issue of Kenyan football, for me, I believe if we can get the club licensing back, then we could head somewhere and then uh, get the uh, club officials educated. You know, I retire from football, I get to management of football and it's, it's, it's well. I don't have any knowledge of, um, of running a club, a professional club. Uh, how do I generate funds for the club? How do I attract sponsors for the club? Uh, how do I uh, how does a club get accountable for the small little money we get? So they also need education. But most of these uh, CEOs and uh, staff, yeah, they are, they, are, they, they are owners of the clubs. So they do whatever they want. And this okay, and I think whatever James is saying that, you know, besides having been a player, it doesn't qualify you outrightly to be a sporting manager. Besides that, you need to have, you know, an extra qualification in terms of in terms of having gone to school mm. probably to study yeah. something related to sports development yeah and uh, also you know you need to understand that management and actual playing sometimes are two far, different things yeah two different things and uh, if we are to mirror some of the best leagues in the world we look at the role of sporting director it's not always it's not always someone who's played, but someone who can have a, an, an, an idea of how to grow this club. Managerial ability. Yeah, so, someone who has a vision and a long-term project that can, that is not necessarily just about the playing side, True. but also from how they hire the people above them, how they hire people, all the way to the analysis in social media, you know. So you should have someone in charge, someone who understands the whole dynamic of football rather than just the playing side because uh, when you say professional, you have to understand a lot of things come into play, not just kicking the ball in the pitch. Before they come to get these people who kick this ball, how are they going to get them and how are they going to keep them comfortable and things like that. So it's not always 
playing doesn't necessarily qualify you for, for such a role, but what qualifies you for a role is your competence levels, I think. I think this is a conversation that we can, you know, preserve for another day because it cannot come to an end. So let's talk about futsal. Yeah. What's futsal? Futsal is a game played indoors. Uh, it's five aside. Uh, I'm just correcting you. There is a keeper. <laughs> there is a goalkeeper. There oh. is a goalkeeper. So it's four outfield players uh, playing against each other. Uh, a half takes 20 minutes. Uh, the whole the whole uh, program lasts for 40 minutes with a break in between a 15 minute uh, break in between uh, futsal is played um, on a pitch the e equivalent of a basketball court mm -hmm. mostly you go to europe you'll find uh, they play them in the gymnasiums where they play uh, basketball but uh, you'll find uh, the court, uh, the, bas the basketball uh, rim is hung somewhere. So they just put the goalposts and guys play foot, uh, futsal. Yeah. So it is a good sport. It's played indoors. Yeah. You can play um, under any weather condition, whether, whether it's raining, where it's sunny. You, you can play futsal all, all year round. I was reading somewhere that you know it originated in South America, yeah. where there were you know plenty of fans who are passionate about you know Is football, but they are got to have had you know scarcity of yeah. playing pitches. Yeah, it originated in Uruguay. In Uruguay, then there was a scholar uh, that brought it to Brazil. So during that time, you remember the the guys who were working in plantations. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, they, they, when they had breaks, they would uh, organize for uh, five-a-side games, and that is how foot, uh, futsal grew in, in Brazil. And uh, they, are quite, they are doing quite well now with, with futsal. It has helped Neymar, guys like Neymar. You see these skills they have, getting out of tight spaces, it is because of futsal training. So we really need uh, to introduce futsal in Kenya so that uh, we get this aspect of the technical side of football. The players get to know how to play in sp small spaces. And this, this, is, this is the thing, the in thing now in, in modern football. Look at Man City. Out of small tight spaces, things are done and beautiful goals are created. And uh, look at Bayern, look at these progressive sides. That is all they do. Recently, you remember Aubameyang was yes. not playing for Chelsea. And uh, he, he flew to Milan to go and play uh, in a futsal uh, tournament to keep fit. You remember? Yes. So th these are avenues that uh, uh, we've not uh, explored here in Kenya. And uh, not only in Kenya. Imagine there are only eight nations playing futsal. In the world? In, in Africa. In Africa. Uh, the Kenya last, is not one of them. Kenya is not one of them. So uh, the last champion is Morocco in the last Cup of Nations for futsal. Morocco are the champions. They dethroned Egypt. Egypt were previously the champions three yes. times in a row. Yes. Yeah, and Libya also won it once. So there is an avenue for us. Uh, we, we, we could be the ninth nation. Uh, Yes. playing in the next African Cup of Nations, the futsal version, in 2024. And that will, be, that will be the tournament used to get qualifiers for the World Cup in 2024. For so how is the reception like in Kenya? It's how are they embracing the sport? It's fantastic. Guys are embracing it. So we, we need to do a lot more, do an outreach. Uh, we are trying to organize for a tournament. Yes. Uh, that will be introductory uh, in June. We'll do it at Nyayo. Um, and uh, we are looking to incorporate both boys and girls with an aim of getting these 15, 16, 17 year old kids uh, to play futsal. Because you remember in 2026, we have uh, the Youth Olympics in, in Dakar. Senegal. Senegal. Yeah. And, uh, in that year that the World Cup is being played, or the, 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 the Olympics is being played, they should be 15, 16, 17, 18 year olds. 
So we are trying to look for uh, early preparations for us to be enabled to play in, in 2026 Futsal Youth Olympics. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, just to, because he touched on skills, you know, if you compare football and, and futsal, I think uh, futsal is free. You know, it's more free than football because Thank you. football is technical, really, when you get to 11 aside yeah. because it's more about positional play. But you look at futsal, you look at the people who played, it gives you the, the, the freedom to do whatever you want with the ball, you know, True. to create your own skill and to, to showcase your brilliance there. So I think that's the beauty of, the ga of it as a game. Yeah. And also, you know, as he said, playing out of tight spaces. Yeah. If you think if uh, you, you train even for 11 aside, you always have rondos. True. You always want to play in small spaces because that helps you grow your ability to become a better footballer in, in the bigger pitch. So yeah. I think for it to grow in this country because uh, I, I personally believe that our football is, is not there, it's not there. Yeah. If, you, if you talk about the Man City, even you look at Brighton right now, our football is not there. So something like futsal, mm. the tight spaces, will be really, really important in building players who can go and play wherever and show their skill, even though it's, it's, it's on the technical side. So I think for Kenya, we just have to now look at how we want to grow it because um, I've been seeing uh, people uh, playing on the artificial grass, True. but it's still, it's still football. But for futsal, you know, you still need to invest a little bit in uh, maybe venue yeah. and, 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 and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But I think there is enough raw skill yeah. People would not even play football. There's enough raw skill for Kenya to go into futsal True. and have great players. So, True. you know, this is a fantastic venture for it to keep growing in this country. True. Yeah. And True. I know you need to get sanctioned by Football Kenya Federation. What are the steps you're taking to reach out to Nick Mwenba led body to ensure that, you know, your activities are in tandem with, uh, you know, the aspirations and uh, their laid down guidelines? You are very right. Because, um, with the structures we have currently, uh, uh, futsal and beach soccer fall under the federation. And uh, we are engaging them. Uh, we are engaging them so that uh, they can, we can partner with them to manage futsal on their behalf. So it is an ongoing process and we believe something positive will come out of it. Yeah. Because we, we have the technical ability to do it you remember last year we, we traveled to Germany. We went and uh, got some valuable uh, um, information that can help us develop futsal in Kenya. So I, I believe something good will come out of it. So in Germany, the sport is rampantly developed? It is professional. It is man. professional? Yeah. It is professional. What was the learning curve? Um, I don't know if I can quantify, but just being there, watching them do their things, uh, we were we we were we had the pleasure of watching the under 19 Hamburg futsal team, the select Hamburg futsal team, training for their national championships, so that they select the national team for Germany. That was the under 19 side. So they have they have under 13, they have under 15. They have under 17, they have under 19. Both futsal and football. And that was the region, the regional team. So like Nairobi, we have the regional team for Nairobi. We do our selection for from under 13 to under 19. Then uh, the coast, they also have theirs like that. You remember the eight provinces we had? Yeah, yeah. So the eight will meet in a national championship, then we do a selection of our... Hold there, James. Of course, let's take a short commercial break before we resume with the conversation regarding development of futsal in Kenya and the state of the game. It's a newly introduced sport. James Omond, of course, is the pioneer former Kenyan internationally, prominently featured for Kenya national team around the stars, and his last, you know, uh, appearance was during African Cup of Nations in Tunisia in 2004 where Kenya got eliminated at the group stage, but now is venturing into a different sporting discipline that is seeking to have it developed locally. Don't go away, stay tuned. It's the touchline and continue talking to us. Hashtag touchline Y254.